General Mills now bring you Arnold Grimm's Daughter, presented by Betty Crocker's Super Cake Flour, Soft the Silk. Are your cakes as light as you'd like them to be? Do they have a delicate, fluffy tenderness that makes them stand out in a class by themselves? I ask you this because so many women tell me their cakes look good and taste good, but somehow they lack that wonderful tenderness that turns a good cake into a masterpiece. Well, that shouldn't be hard to correct. Did you ever try soft to silk cake flour together with Betty Crocker's special simplified recipes? When it comes to sheer tender lightness, this famous combination virtually cannot fail. In fact, we're so convinced it'll give you better results. We'll make you this amazing guarantee. Either your cakes are lighter and fluffier, or General Mills will give you double your money back. That is, they will return twice the price you paid for soft to silk in the first place. Just send the top from the package together with your name and address and the price you paid for soft to silk to Betty Crocker, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now, when General Mills make a remarkable guarantee like that, you may rest assured they're not just guessing. For one thing, they know that the tender lightness obtained with the soft to silk method has helped women win first prizes in county fair cake-making contests all over the country. And then, too, they know that soft to silk cake flour has a unique tender rising action which acts to make your cakes light and delicate. At the same time, this fluffiness is combined with a wonderfully delicate velvety texture. And, of course, the delicious flavor of cakes made the soft to silk way is something well known to cake makers everywhere. Now, if you'd like your cakes to have the wonderful fluffy tenderness I've mentioned, why don't you try the soft to silk way yourself? You'll find that the necessary recipes come right with the package. These simplified recipes, by the way, are specially designed for use with soft to silk. And so, if you follow them, you virtually cannot go wrong. Get a package of soft to silk cake flour today. And now, for Arnold Grimm's daughter. Stan has become almost too high-powered for Connie. Our heroine is bewildered by Stan's growing excitement over his job of selling cooperative apartments for the suave promoter, Mark Fitzgerald. The apartment house is not yet built. Indeed, the ground hasn't been broken for it. And Connie feels that Stan should be selling something a trifle tangible. Stan, however, feels that Connie is being a wet blanket and is almost annoyed with her. And as the action starts, it is late afternoon and Connie, in her office at the Petite Bazaar, is busily pasting up the proof for a page in the Milford Courier. She's deep in her work when the door opens and Madame Babette comes in. Madame Babette is speaking. Listen. How are you doing, Connie? I'm covered with muesli from the tip of my nose to the soles of my feet. Ooh, why do you not use the cement of rubber? Oh, Jimmy borrowed the rubber cement from me a couple of days ago and he hasn't seen fit to return it. <laughs> why not raise the studio and help yourself? <laughs> Did you ever try to find anything in Jimmy's studio? Answer me that. Yes, Connie, I have tried. May I look over your shoulder, my dear? Mm-hmm, but keep it a safe distance. I don't want you to get stuck up, too. Stuck up? Oh, this American language, it is so funny. Half the time, stuck up means conceit. And half the time, it means blue early fingers. Oh, la, la, I shall never be an American. Oh, you're practically one already. Oh, in the spirit, perhaps, but not in the speech. Connie! That is very nice. Mm, cuts came out awfully well, I think. Of course, if Jimmy had made the drawings, they'd have had more snap to them. Oh, but let's detail. In the lace on that petticoat, Connie, you have done it superb. Oh, I can give a good imitation of lace with pen and ink, but I'm not an artist. Oh, I am not sure that women uh, desire high art when it comes to advertisements. They wish to see what they will purchase. Tooks the exact number and ruffles the exact width. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. You may be right. Say, uh, stand up in this morning, Adam. Oui, oui. I know it. Oh, did I tell you before? Oh, I don't remember mentioning it at lunch, hmm? Connie, you are not the only one of whom Stanley is fond. He paused at my office to pass the time of day before he started out on his so vigorous selling campaign. Oh, we had a nice little talk. Stanley said that he could not progress without me. But just after Stan left my office, I heard the door slam. <laughs> I naturally suppose he left the building. No doubt he had. Stanley came to see me first. You mean before he came to see me? We? Oui. But Stan hadn't seen me since I came back from Chicago. Well, 
Dr. Ashmeran. Are you cutting me out? No, that is another for strange American idiom. We cut out the undergarments upon his table with a satin and scissors, and the automobiles... Madam, the vet, the... stop quibbling. Now, there's something between you and Sam. Use friendship, Connie. He is young enough to be my own son. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Madam Babette, are you and Sam plotting something? Plotting? I do not understand, Connie. Oh, you look as guilty as guilty. Just what are you up to? Must you scold me because I lend a sympathetic ear to a boy who so sorely needs them? Oh, no, but... Well, I keep going back to the time when you and Stan were such enemies. Let the dead pass to remove its dead. I have said that Stanley and I are now friends. This has been coming on more or less gradually, I suppose. Did something happen while I was in Chicago? Oh, no, practically every minute I can account for. It was the weekend and I visited a little Tweedy twice. Well, Madam, I'm it. not trying to check up on you. But you are. Of course, when Stanley confided in me, I was so deeply touched by his confidence. Oh, so he confided in you. Oh, I am so stupid. Always the cat I let out of his suitcase. Just how far did Stan go, madam? Do you mean today? No, of course not. I mean while I was in Chicago. Just what did he tell you? A great deal. Meaning? Well, he told me about his job. His every oath and his plan he confided to me. Oh, Connie, is it not lovely that he's so charming Mark Fitzgerald has made Stanley a vice president? All right, all right, Madam Babette. Just what did Stanley tell you about us? I have not said that he told anything. Oh, but I know he did. Well, Connie, you have asked for it. Stanley confided to me that your engagement is just so much sham. You're something that the wind may blow away like the down of a thistle. Well, that was darn nice and considerate of Stan. He might have, either, might have asked my consent before he began to broadcast everything he knew. Well, but you are not well, here. Well, he might have asked now, my consent. Now, do not go so fast, Connie. When Stanley came in to see you and found that you were gone with, with never a goodbye... He was crushed, and I tried to comfort him, and, well, one thing led to another. And he shot the work. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, my wait. All right, and see, with half an eye, that turns one you over to his side. Well, it's a break. Of course, that's because he's a man. Women always side with men against other women. Especially when the right side is on the side of the gentleman. Oh, now, madam, how can you talk that way? The right isn't on Stan's side. You would be forced to say so. Nobody's ever more ready to admit they've made a mistake than I am. I'm not a prig, madam. I made plenty of mistakes in my time, and I bitterly regret every one of them. But while you were making the mistakes, you were so stubborn. Now take the case of Christopher Forrest. Everyone advised you to leave him alone. I still won't admit that Chris Forrest was a mistake. He gave me a great deal. Ha! He gave you a night in jail and an unpleasant court experience. Connie Stanley was generous in regard to Christopher Forrest. Never once, as he said, I told you so. You stand at them. They're generous about Chris. And yet, just because there was one girl in his past, one single girl. Oh, Stan told you about Eve, too. But of course. Well, you didn't see her. Oh, but I know the time. Now, don't start defending that grand woman. She was. Well, she was so hard. Oh, there is something so stimulating about such women. Oh, I'm beginning to lose my patience, madam. And that. I mind. Stan told Mademoiselle Eve in front of you that he was finished. What more can you ask? But there had been something between them, and he had promised to marry her. So what? Oh, Connie, there is nothing so cold as a love that has burned itself out. It is colder than the ashes of yesterday's fire. I myself, though I have never met Mademoiselle Eve, can assure you that you have nothing to fear from her. Now you're being ridiculous. I never did fear anything from her. I'd be pretty darn ashamed of myself if I couldn't hold my own against a girl like Eve Graham. That's what said with spirit. Oh, Connie... Honey, be honest. If you had loved Stanley enough, Eve would have been just the merest detail, like the lace which you drew with Penny Link upon the petticoat. You are using this blonde one as an excuse for the weakness of your feelings for poor Stanley. Perhaps I Well, why did you become engaged to him in the first place if you are willing to break things off like this? Oh, Stan was so splendid during the trial. He was so gentle and comforting and patient. I'm not the first woman to mistake gratitude for love, madam. No, not the last. But mark my word, many a love that has begun with gratitude has lasted far longer than a love that has been built upon the shifting sands of passion and nothing else. Oh, I admit everything you say is... Madam, let's go the show. I better get this air back to the courier before they lock the presses. Then I must get back to the planning of the trousseau. 
But let me tell you this, Connie. Something else? No, we. Something else. Stanley will go the limit to win you back. The moment he's on his feet again and has plenty of money and isn't discouraged anymore, I'll step out of the picture. Hmm. You only think that. Why, oh, then I am a thinker. You had it your way and I had it mine. Stanley is trying his best, Connie. It would be a poor reward for diligence if you shot him out. Call me a tramp and be done with it, but I must run my own life in my own way. And I must learn to leave you alone so as you make your own grave error. But, Sherry, one slight favor do I ask. What is it? Be kind to Stanley for the next few days. He's rebuilding his own life just now. And he needs the applause. I realize that. Well, do not pour wet water upon his enthusiasm, Connie. You mean cold water? It's cold water and wet blanket, madam. I've heard quite a bit about those hot lately. No, please, Oh, all Connie. right, I promise. I won't be picky and I won't criticize darling Mark Fitzgerald and I won't ask embarrassing questions about the apartment building. But my questions are embarrassing when you come down to Casey. Oh, that is a good girl. Wait, Stanley, where did you drop from? I'm back from the wars, madam. Not on my shield, but with it. Your arrival was very pat, then. Did you and Madame Babette have this all fixed up? Why, anybody think that Madame Babette and I were in cahoots? Now, how could anybody think anything like that? <laughs> Madame, you're a fraud. And my soul, Connie, I did not know that Stanley was in the shop. I knew that he would arrive about his time of course. Uh, I bet you did. Well, all both of you enjoy your mutual admiration society while I finish your day. Oh, I didn't intend to stick around, Connie, not just now. I'm going upstairs to take a shower and change my clothes. I'm all gummy and hot. Oh, God, don't tramping around in the east. Well, don't think I haven't been making hay while the sun shone. <laughs> I'm going to get into my best bib and tucker because I'm taking the swellest girl in the world to dinner tonight. Well, I hope you enjoy yourself. Well, that's not the point. I hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> Connie, I'm going to take you to our favorite roadhouse and ply you with rich viands. Oh, don't be foolish, Sam. Well, foolish, my eye. But you can't afford it. Connie, when a man wishes to be extravagant and be a woman should never remind him that he cannot afford it. After marriage, the man will do the reminding. Time enough, then. Snake. Don't put notions in Connie's head, madam. Sean, do not censor my feet. Stop <laughs> it, you two. Then I know. Uh, you don't know nothing yet. This time, young lady, I won't have to borrow the cash to pay the check. I'm well here. Well, then save your money. Please, Sam. No, sir. I intend to take my best girl to dinner. But, Sam, aside from everything else, I can't go. I'm covered with mucilage. You'll be all thick and span and beautiful and... Oh, I'll be like the last rose of summer, all sticky and alone. Oh, Connie, your car is parked right out in front of one home and change your clothes. Oh, but I'm so tired. Now, old Dr. Westland orders a little relaxation as a complete cure for that tired view. Well, I suppose it could be arranged. There's an angel. There's an angel. When we get to the dessert and coffee, Connie, I'll have a pleasant little shock for you. Hold everything until then. What is the pleasant shock that Stan has in store for Connie? And how will she accept it? Is Madam right? Has Stan still a chance to win back Connie's love? Or is she merely using the other woman for a mental alibi? Be sure to tune in at the same time tomorrow, for Stan is once more able to play host and in the old way. You know, I'd give a lot to be able to see your family when they try their first piece of soft to silk cake. Because I honestly do believe they've never known such fluffy, delicate tenderness in a cake before. Of course, your cakes are probably light and tender to a certain degree right now. But I believe the fluffiness, the tenderness you get the softest silk way, will far outdo anything you've ever been able to get before. And it's so simple, too. Special simplified recipes come right with the package. Follow them, and you virtually cannot go wrong. Get a package of soft to silk cake flour today. This is Pierre Andre speaking and inviting you all to be with us tomorrow for the next episode of Arnold Grimm's Daughter. Listen now to Joan Blaine in Valiant Lady. This program follows immediately after a 10-second pause for your station identification.